Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another recent reads video for you. I'm going to be talking about seven books today, which I finished since I last managed to film a recent reads video. So that's not too bad. Some of them I won't take very long to talk about either because I've talked about them a lot already. But let's just get into it, shall we? So the first book I'm talking about today is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. I really, really loved this book. I gave it five stars. This is YA fantasy inspired by African mythology. I think Jordan Ifuko is Nigerian American, so I think it's that. But the world that she's created is, I'm just trying to remember if there's a map. Yeah, so it, it is, it's not like strictly based on the African continent in that sense and some of the other cultures she describes are clearly inspired by other cultures so like I think Songland is quite inspired by maybe China, Chinese culture, Biroslav is probably Russian culture, Nantes is French, that sort of thing. So there's quite a lot of different influences that are included in the book. The main character Tarasai is from the Swana area of the continent in the book and that is clearly quite African inspired. Lots of references to ath mythologies and that sort of thing so that's really cool. The magic system in this is pretty cool as well. I'll try and explain it. It's been a couple of weeks since I read it. So the royal family have been granted a power called the Ray and that enables them to communicate with their 11 council members and also protects them from any death apart from old age unless one of their council members betrays them. So the story centres around the young prince Deo who is looking for his council and the main character Tarasai she has a form of memory magic so she can see people's memories and and sometimes she can temporarily remove them if they're distressing to them. She has been raised specifically to infiltrate the prince's council, like to become part of his council. Her mother's called the Lady, we don't know that much about her until right near the end of the book. She has made a wish, <laughs> I'm probably not going to explain this the right way, her wish was that she would have the child Teresai and she makes a wish through Tar that she will kill the prince that's in the blurb so <laughs> you know that this is part of the goal but everything is seen from Tar's perspective she's grown up quite isolated so when she gets to the palace and meets all these other kids and she finally has friends she's got really conflicted motivations and yeah it's just a really well written complex story I really really enjoyed it I loved the exploration of the magic system I loved the found family element the ship wasn't the obvious one which was was really cool as well it subverted that slightly which I really liked very minimal ace representation but I think that is going to develop as the books go on so I'm interested to see what happens with that content warnings in this book for fire child abuse domestic abuse it's been a little while since I read it so I can't remember all of the things what I will do <laughs> for this book and all the other books is I will link to the book trigger warnings website in the description box which will hopefully have more <laughs> of the content that might be triggering for you because I have a really hard time remembering all of it when I'm on the spot filming like this. If you would like to know whether this book is safe for you I really recommend going and checking out that website. I can't think of anything else I want to say about this. I really love this book. I gave it five stars. I'm really excited to carry on the series. Really do highly recommend this. When it was about to come out there was quite a lot of hype about it but I haven't had that much hype since it's come out and I think it's really is deserving of a lot of attention. I think it's really well written for a debut especially and I'm really excited to see what happens next in this series so I can't wait for the next book to come out. I don't think we even have a title for the next book yet so I'm probably going to be waiting a while. So yeah really do highly recommend this book. The next book that I finished was one I mentioned in my currently reading list for December so I'm really pleased to have finished it. There's a couple here actually that I'm going to talk about that were on that list. This is The Loving Cup by Winston Graham which is the 10th book in the Poldark series. So the Poldark series follows the Poldark family. The first seven books follow one generation and then the final five books follow the next generation but all the characters from the first books are still around. Yeah it's just a continuing kind of family story about the ins and outs of this family set in like 19th century Cornwall. There's like family feuds going on, there's intrigue, there's plotting. This is set at the time of the Napoleonic Wars as well so several of the characters go off to fight in the wars. The central family, the Poldarks, are a mining family so a lot of the story in the past books 
particularly has been about how their minds are working and a lot about that and the villages around them. I can't really talk about this book because like what happens specifically in this book because it is the tenth one in a series but I really do recommend the series. You may have seen the BBC adapted the first like seven books recently. This actually picture on this one is from a previous adaptation which covered the whole series but yeah I do actually recommend the TV series was relatively good if you want to get a flavour for what the books are but they, they definitely don't live up to the quality of the books so I really do recommend the series. The first one is called, I think it's just called Poldark or is it called Ross Poldark? I think it might be called Ross Poldark. I can't, I'm looking over there because they're on my dad's bookshelf but there's stuff in the, in the way so I can't actually see. <laughs> so yeah if you haven't checked out the series, if you like historical fiction, if you like family stories then these are really really good examples of that. I gave this one four stars. It was a pretty good contribution to the series and I've only got two books left now so I'm hopefully gonna finish this series next year because I've been reading it for like probably ten years now. So yeah hopefully we'll finish the series next year. Okay so the next book that I finished was another one that was on that currently reading list for December and this was Saving Lucas Biggs by Marissa de los Santos and David Teague. This is a uh, middle grade. It is, I think I characterised it as historical fantasy when I was trying to genreify it because it's about time travel but it's like not a scientific kind of time travel, it's like a genetic quirk that this one family has that enables them to travel through time but it feels kind of more magic than sciency and half of the novel is set in the 1930s yeah in the 1930s and the other half is set kind of in the present day 2014 and so the story alternates between the perspective of Margaret in 2014 and Josh in 1938 and then at one point Margaret travels back in time. So the premise of the book is that Margaret's father has just been wrongfully convicted of a crime that he didn't commit and there's a kind of a conspiracy in this town that anyone that speaks out against the mining corporation that runs the town then bad things will happen to them and that's been all the way since back in the day in the 1930s when the town was kind of founded. So the parallel storylines follow what happened in the 1930s that led to the situation where this judge Lucas Biggs is now in power has been given the power to convict Margaret's father of a crime he didn't commit and what led to that situation happening. So the premise is if Margaret can go back in time and change the events that happened in 1938 she has the potential of being able to save her father in the present day. That's kind of all that you get from the blurb. I thought it was really cleverly written with the two timelines. I wonder if because it's two authors, they're a married couple, if Marissa Dolla Santos wrote the Margaret chapters and David Teague wrote the Josh chapters, I'm not entirely sure but it wouldn't surprise me if that was what happened because both characters did have quite a distinct voice. I really liked some of the characters that were in it, particularly there's a kind of eccentric aunt that appears and she's quite fun. For what it was I thought it was good, I gave it four stars in the end. It was definitely written for a certain audience and I think if I'd read it when I was about the same age as Margaret is in the book I really really would have loved it. It. And reading it as an adult I can see why it would appeal to that age group and I didn't want to mark it down because of that. It was a little bit more realistic in places but kind of the message that it's giving is a good one. All in all it was a really fun book. Some quite serious quite sad moments but ultimately quite a redemptive story and I thought it was pretty cleverly done. So I'm really glad to have finally finished it because I started it in September and just didn't really have time to pick it up so I'm glad that I sat down and got to the end. <laughs> Another one that was on that list, I actually did pretty well so far with that list, was We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. So this was non-fiction, Christian non-fiction. It is about the experience of black people in white majority churches in the UK and kind of a bit of a history of some of the systemic racism in the UK and how that affects experience of people in churches. I thought this was really, really brilliant, really timely for now. It was written a couple of years ago. Oh, it was published last year, but felt really relevant to some of the events that have happened this year. Ben Lindsay actually gave a seminar, which loads of people from my college were invited to. It was online and it was really super interesting. And so I actually received this book for free from the diocese, which they offered to a lot of people at college. And so I was really pleased to get a copy of it and I'm gonna lend it to, out to some of my housemates that haven't had a chance to read it yet. Ben Lindsay knows his stuff. He's been involved in church leadership for a long time and has seen it from both sides, both as a 
member of congregations and as a church leader. I think he's worked in black majority and white majority churches and can see the difference and had lots of really practical suggestions for how white majority churches can improve the experience of people of colour in their congregations. So I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was really good. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. Yeah, really worth a read if you are involved in church and want to know more about how people of colour feel within church. Really, really powerful. And then the next book I finished was another one from that currently reading list for December and that was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So this was a reread for me. I picked it up because I'm loosely in a classics book club and that was a book they were reading, I think it was a September book, it must have been, yeah. And yeah, I was listening to the audiobook on the BBC Sounds app and I really do recommend that audiobook actually, the narrator was brilliant. Pretty much the only reason I didn't DNF the book was because of the narrator because she was really really good. So I'd read this a really long time ago when I was a teenager. I've seen various adaptations over the years. It's not my favourite. I think I gave it three stars. The format of the story within the story within the story didn't really work for me. I remember it not really working for me the first time I read it and it still didn't really work for me this time. And just all the characters are just so horrible. And that's the thing for me, I really, I prefer character driven books for sure. And I have to want to root for the characters. And just in this book, <laughs> there was, like there was only one character that I vaguely liked, which was the younger Catherine. Not a lot of love for that book, unfortunately. I do think Emily Bronte was a genius. It was a really well written book, just not for me, <laughs> it didn't. Love it. But I do recommend the BBC Sounds app if you would like to read more audiobooks. They have loads on there for free. Most of the classics on there are, are full versions. They have some modern books on there as well, which may be abridged versions, but definitely worth checking out if you want to read more audiobooks. I don't really have a lot more to say about it than that, so it's a really well-known book. I'll give a very quick synopsis. So it follows the story of Heathcliff, who is a foundling brought up within a wealthy-ish family that live at Wuthering Heights. Um, there's rivalry between him and the son of the family, and I can never remember the names. Hindley Angel, is that right? I can't remember. And there's kind of a romance between Heathcliff and Cathy, who's the daughter of the family, but Heathcliff is a bit wild. They kind of have a bit of a love-hate relationship and then one day Cathy meets Edgar Linton who lives at their house down the road and he's wealthy and he's polite and well-mannered. Various things happen, the situation descends into chaos essentially <laughs> and it follows the convoluted ins and outs of this family over a number of years across both generations as well what happens with the their children. So really complex, really well written story. Emily Bronte did write it really really well but the story is told, the story kicks off with another chap whose name I've forgotten who is renting one of the houses and spends the night at Wuthering Heights and is basically not treated very nicely by Heathcliff and has a visit from the ghost of Cathy and then when he gets back to the house that he's renting he has the flu and he has to stay in bed and the housekeeper Nellie tells him the story of what happened between all these families and that's kind of the setup for it so it's a really complicated setup to tell the story and that didn't entirely work for me anyway that's my thoughts on it if you're new to classics it's not one I would recommend you start with kind of build up to it maybe read some of the other Brontes first read Anne Bronte she is heavily underrated and really deserves as much attention as her sisters So the next one I'm only going to talk about very quickly because it's a really short book that I had to read for uni. So this is Telling Terror in Judges 19 which was written by Helen Painter who's one of my lecturers and she's a legend, I love her. She's a brilliant lecturer. I've really enjoyed the modules I've been taking with her this term. So she teaches me Hebrew and then I was doing a hermeneutics class with her and I had to read this book for our last hermeneutics lecture which we've just finished and I'm very sad because it was one of my favourite classes and I was only auditing so I didn't even have to write an essay for it so it was brilliant. We were looking at hermeneutics as about kind of the methods of studying the Bible and so the last lecture we were looking at reparative readings and so this is an attempt at a reparative reading of one of the most troubling stories in the Bible which is in Judges 19. It's a story about a Levite and his concubine and basically she is horribly raped and murdered. <laughs> it's a really really awful story. So in this book Helen tries to find a way of 
bringing some sort of positive message out of that and she does it really really well. We only had to read like the last two chapters for the lecture but because it's such a short book I thought you know I'll try and read the whole book because it's only it's less than 100 pages about 80 pages I think and actually I'm writing a PhD proposal at the moment and reparative re reading is something that is probably a technique I'm going to want to use if I get to do my PhD. <laughs> so this was a really helpful book. A lot of feminist theology comes from a, the perspective that the Bible is really horrible to women, it's a, like that it's a misogynistic text. This book makes the argument that actually while horrible stuff happens to women in the Bible it doesn't mean that the, the authors of the text approve of what happens, which is a really subtle nuance that is missed <laughs> a lot of the time and so this is it, what is explored in this book and what I probably want to look more into so if you are of that opinion then this may be one to look into but yeah heck loads of content warnings for rape and murder <laughs> it's, it's a really troubling story that's in the bible but there is loads of upsetting stuff in the bible that we have to deal with and we have to find a way to understand a god who loves us despite these horrible things happening and I think the more we can work at doing that, the more sense Christianity makes in the modern world. So I really enjoyed this very short book. And then the last book I'm talking about today, I'm again not going to talk loads about this because I just finished filming a book diary for this. This is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm not sure what order I'm going to upload stuff in but I imagine I probably will upload the book diary before this so I will link it in the description box for you so you can go and check it out for more of my thoughts on this book. This book is inspired by South American history and mythology, kind of like pre-Columbus, so kind of like the Aztec, Inca, people, that sort of stuff. Really excellent world building, like the setting was really vivid, I could really like imagine all the stuff, all the different cities, and there were several different cities that she describes, and they were described really really well, really gorgeous maps. I'm so pleased I actually ended up with the hardback of this because I don't buy a lot of hardbacks but because for Space Irons we have been reading quite a lot of new releases I've been having to get the hardbacks of them and it's actually really lovely sometimes to have hardback editions particularly when you end up really enjoying a book I gave this one four stars in the end there is quite a lot of violent stuff in it but it's not like gratuitous it just was there were a couple of bits I was reading and it made me like feel a bit blah, a little bit ill so that was probably the only reason it didn't get the full five stars from me because there was there were a couple of bits with injury to eyes and it, uh, anything to do with eyes just makes me blah. Again, content warnings for all of the books that I've talked about will be linked in the description box below for you because they're just I'm really bad at remembering them. There are like four main characters that it follows their storylines and it's to do with the clash of two kind of rival religious powers. So in the main city of Tova, the sun priest and the watchers are responsible for like the spiritual life of the city and they influence the four clans who are matriarchal clans which was really cool as well. But then the four clans each used to have their own gods, their own cults which were kind of been superseded by the sun cult. So one of the main characters, Serapio, his mother's told him he is going to be the reincarnation of the crow god. His purpose in life is to defeat the sun god. So the novel kind of follows his journey to get to the city. He teams up with a captain called Ziala who is from the Teak people who are a mysterious seafaring people that no one really knows that much about, only rumours. The sun priest Narampa is one of the other main characters and then Okoa who is the son of the matriarch of the crow clan and it follows their four storylines. It's told non-sequentially so at the start of every chapter it tells you how many days or years it is to the convergence which is a solar eclipse where everything is going to come to a head. I'm really glad I knew that before I started reading it because otherwise I probably would have been very confused but it does say clearly at the beginning of each chapter so it's really useful to pay attention to that to root yourself in what stage of the journey this is. Some of it is told in kind of not flashback it fills in the backstory for some of the characters as well as it goes along to give you more information about them. If you want to know more of my thoughts check out my book diary I'll also link the Space Sirens live show which unfortunately I couldn't be a part of this time around where they talk about this book so I'll link that for you as well and so you can find out what some of my 
Faye Siren's friends thought of the book too. Right, so that's seven books that I finished recently. Love to hear if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and let me know some of what you've been reading recently as well. And please also like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow me on my social media. All that information will be listed in the description box below for you, but that's it for today, so thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Thank you.